The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the third Sunday in the season of Easter. It's so very nice to spend some time with you today and to talk about our Gospel reading, which comes from the Gospel of St. Luke. We kind of bounce around between St. Luke and St. John uh, during our Easter readings. And this one is from St. Luke. And it is uh, focused on disciples who are going to Emmaus. And that should kind of ring a bell to anyone who lives in Pennsylvania. Because we have Emmaus. We have an Emmaus. We have a, a Bethlehem. We have an Emmaus. We have a number of other towns that have significant names in the Bible. And so it just kind of feels good and right for us to hear uh, disciples going to Emmaus from Jerusalem. Our gospel tells us when this happened. Now, on the same day, when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Well, golly gee, that would be on Easter Sunday, wouldn't it? For Jesus appeared to the women who had come to his tomb on Easter morning. And at first they thought that he wasn't there, but then he appears to them and he tells them that they should do certain things, that he should make his disciples aware of his presence. And the disciples later on hear this from the women, but are still not necessarily certain what has happened. In today's gospel, the same kind of things happens. The two disciples who are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus are told this, this fantastic story 
They describe it this way. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women said, but we did not see him. And so this story of our Lord's resurrection echoes far beyond Easter's morning. It echoed last Sunday as we talked about uh, Thomas, who had not been with the disciples in that, uh, that hold-up house that they were in for fear of the Jews. And now we hear the same kind of story again. Jesus appears not only to his disciples, who are held up in a house for fear, but to disciples who are on a bit of an excursion, a seven-mile walk to Emmaus. And so Jesus walks with them, and he talks with them, and they talk to him about the terrible things that have happened in Jerusalem. It makes you wonder why Jesus asked the question about what happened there, because he knows exactly what happened there. And it seems like those, those disciples he, he walks with are, are just kind of, you know, how could you possibly not know? The most terrible thing has happened to the people of Israel. The prophet of God, who we hoped would save us, was crucified. At the word of our leaders, he was crucified by the Romans. How sad that was. And then the events that follow. It's interesting to hear what our Lord has to say to these disciples who are on their way to Emmaus. Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. He goes on, was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? And if that isn't enough, boys and girls, he explains how, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, all the things the prophets have said apply to him in the scriptures. If you need a road map, I'm going to give it to you in scripture. We'll start with Moses, we'll work our way through the prophets, and you will know I am you will know Jesus is, because they still don't know who he is. They, you will know Jesus is the Messiah of God who needed to be crucified and then rise from the dead. We hear later on in our gospel reading that Jesus takes a, a faster pace and walks ahead of those disciples. But they urge him, stay with us, it's getting late. Oh, I'm hungry, there's food in the house, come on. And so he goes to stay with them and when he's at the table, it is Jesus, still unknown to his disciples, who take, takes the bread and blesses it and breaks it and gives it to them. He is the guest, but at this table he is the host also. How this should seem kind of, I don't know, maybe kind of usual to us, because Jesus is not only the, the guest at our table, but he's also the host. Matter of fact, he is the bread himself. He breaks the bread and his, their eyes are open and they recognize him and then he vanishes from their sight. Listen, folks, I don't think there's any, any story that's kind of even more amazing. Last week we heard of how Jesus appeared among his disciples after his resurrection. He just appeared. The doors were locked, but he appeared. And then he appeared the following week. And in this case, Jesus is already there. And when they recognize him, Jesus disappears. Oh my, oh my, the Lord was with us. It is he who broke the bread and blessed it and gave it to us to eat. We heard his voice and as the disciples go on to mention, were not our hearts burning with us while we were walking, talking to him on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. Did we not know, even as we were walk walking, that he was the one? We did not recognize him, but he, he shared with us a roadmap for salvation. It's a wonderful thing that Jesus does for these disciples, how he reveals himself to them and provides for them a roadmap of faith, how the scriptures apply, and if all else fails, with the breaking of the bread, he makes himself known to his disciples. Every Sunday, and certainly uh, the first Saturday of the month, we break the bread as Jesus did. 
We say the words of our Lord's Last Supper. We share a cup of salvation. And we remember again that Jesus Christ is Lord. He reveals himself to us in the breaking of bread and in the cup of salvation. And that's a wonderful thing. Let's find comfort in this particular gospel. The Son of God, crucified and risen from the dead, comes to his disciples to assure them and comfort them and reveal himself to them. I think God continues to reveal himself to us in a variety of ways and circumstances, certainly through scripture, certainly when we gather for worship, when we sing and pray together, certainly in the sacraments, certainly in the words of men and women of faith who encourage us to follow in the path of Christ. God is with us. Let us give thanks to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.